Steam Deck friends, Liam here. I have found my newest obsession. What you're seeing here is called Heretic's Fork. It's a tower defense game blended with a deck builder that also brings in a little bit of Vampire Survivor's chaos and I can't stop playing it. Seriously, since release this game has been taking over my life. Starting with the important notes, it does work just fine on Steam Deck and Desktop Linux with Proton Experimental. The performance is absolutely fantastic as well, but on Steam Deck there is no controller support, but the controls are so basic and simple, it really is not a problem at all. The only real issue on Steam Deck is that some of the text is a little bit small, but I've been getting on with it just fine. Now in Heretic's Fork you're basically a manager of hell, you are tasked with punishing sinners in the tower defense setting. So at its core, Heretic's Fork is a tower defense game, but not in any way in the traditional sense. There's no lanes that you have to defend, enemies will just swarm at you and come from everywhere. You also have quite a limited amount of towers that you can place down at any time, all of which go directly into the middle of the screen, and you can combine towers of the same type and level to upgrade them to a certain point to make them more powerful. Now this game actually mixes in real time with a sort of turn based system because as your towers and creatures take down enemies the bar on the right fills up for your experience which then starts a new turn. This is where you will pick cards to place down towers, units, upgrades, combine cards to get something better, banish useless cards so they don't come back during a run and more. As you're doing all this messing around with cards though, time is only slowed down, so you can't take forever. You need to get going as it's all still going on in the background, just a lot slower. Thankfully, you can just pause the game at any time if you need to, if you need to take a breather, but you can also speed it up if, like me, you find the initial normal speed just too slow. Now, I have been playing a lot of this. Seriously, I was sitting in bed with my Steam Deck the other night thinking that I'll just have one or two more runs before bed and I stayed up half the night playing it and I've been playing it for half the day today as well. It's truly sunken its devilish teeth right into me. The real hook here is how you use the card system. There's hundreds of cards and the chaos comes from all the various upgrades they can do from the attack speed to increasing the area of effect so everything is bigger and eventually you just fill up half the screen with bullets, fires, spinning blades and all sorts. There's a good few different types of towers as well, and as you start to unlock more of the game, you will get even more different types. But there's also creature spawners that you can use instead of traditional towers too, so then you have little people running around your screen. It really has been giving me a similar feeling to the first time I picked up Vampire Survivors and Brotato and all the different clones of that, of just needing one more run to increase my high score, buy some more cards, and just see how ridiculous I can make it. There's absolutely tons of challenges to go through as well, and each of them will give you a new card when you complete it, and some of the cards are just awesome. Now for most of this video you've been seeing it on the higher speed, but in this clip right here I did set it back to the normal speed just to show you, but for me it really the normal speed just feels too slow. So I do play the majority of it on the faster speed because it just feels more fun to me personally. And the utter chaos when it's on the higher speed is just pure entertainment to watch when it really gets into the later game. Now outside of the main tower defense there's also this funny hellish desktop environment that it gives you as if you are actually working in an office in hell where you get stupid emails from demons and other workers. As you go through there's like a devilish version of Clippy that gives you various info. You also get to buy new cards, there's multiple characters to play as each with different abilities to bring into the battle. Like one of them will give you an extra starting tower slot Another will give you the ability to redraw your hand, but the game will also give you a couple of little mini games in this desktop area. And there's lots more that I don't want to spoil because the meta here is really cool. Once you beat the game for the first time, you'll also then unlock an endless mode, which is quite a bit more difficult. So you can get that high score up and just see how far you can push it. It's truly a great way to kill some time. And it also has some really kick-ass music. Don't sleep on Heretic's Fork. It is 
is awesome. That's all I've got to say about Heretic's Fork right now. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you later.